2005 saw a momentous victory for fox hunting saboteur groups and animal rights activists alike. Fox hunting was now made illegal under the new 2004 Hunting Act. The act prohibited the hunting of wild animals with the use of dogs. End of story? Not quite. Within the act are circumstances in which the stalking and flushing out of a wild animal, such as a fox, is still allowed. The law also still permits drag hunting, also called trail hunting, which is where hounds are trained to follow an artificial scent which has been laid prior to the hunt. This is part of the reasoning that hunting parties are still a regular sight. I set out to investigate claims that the Hunting Act is flawed with loopholes, creating an arguably messier scene amongst pro and anti-hunters, one where the foxes aren't the only ones seeing bloodshed. I started my investigation in Kent, where I was lucky enough to get a behind-the-scenes insight into life as a fox hunting saboteur. These are people who actively try and sabotage hunts. They hunt the hunters. I was particularly interested in the controversial, yet under certain circumstances lawful, use of terrier dogs. These dogs are used to pursue foxes to their dens, where they then flush them out to be killed by a hunter. Terrier work, basically. Spades on something that's clearly either a fox or badger earth. Um, and basically what they've done, they've certainly blocked all the holes in, that's for sure. So they could have put the terrier, terrier down the hole. The terrier might have been face to face with the fox here and then they've just dug down to it. The reason why the hunt would cave in these earths is so a fox basically can't run to ground. If you look here, you can see that's a clean spade mark. That's all caved in. Terrier work has clearly happened here. Hi Steve! Where is it today? Can you help? No, you haven't said anything. What well, Andy, can you help? No. Oh, you yeah. ain't been free chatting today, are you? Does it matter to you? Once we've finished spraying where the fox has gone, we'll wait to see if the hounds pick up the scent and stop them from coming this way. We'll use uh, voice calls and we'll make commands for them to stop. What scent are you using today? Oh, I don't know, that's not my department. You don't know? So you've got no idea what trail the dogs are following today? I think it's like a fox scent. Or like a Euroide? Or yeah, a... I think so. Do you mind me asking where do you get foxes Euroide? Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> oh. No idea. Bladder of a fox, unfortunately. I then set off to Devon to hear what the hunters had to say. <laughs> Anti hunt people and everything, they portray that they're, they're aggressive killing machines, they're this and that. These hounds, they're soft as butter, like you can put them about, they'll jump all over you. It's a lack of knowledge and they don't want to understand what it's all about. Then you know they're not country people. A lot of these people are getting paid to come out of universities for the weekend to cause trouble, and it's their drinking money for a Saturday night. I mean, we lay trails all day today. I don't have any terrier men because we're laying trails, so um, we don't have any of that. Um, and we go and have a bit of fun, but they just, you know, they are what they are at the end of the day. It is actually. Uh, within the law to do terry work, uh, okay. not with hounds. If, if there was a fox in a hole, you are legally allowed to put a dog in the ground and put nets on it. There's a fox in there, and it's on a game key, game shoot or somewhere like that. It is within the law to put a terrier in the ground and bolt the fox into a net. You mainly kill it with a gun for the protection of wild birds and game birds. My thoughts on the matter is, I since I've been here, I've stopped the terrier work because we're trail hunting. Before I came, I've been here a year, they had the antis every day, twice a week. And I stopped the terrier work and we've had the antis once. They're attracted towards the terrier work. They are doing it within the law. Um, although the antis don't want to think that. But Do you sort of accept thought. that some people probably are doing it unlawfully? Though? Well, I don't know. I mean, it's each to their own and you do what you think is correct. I know we do it within the law and what other hunts do, 
I don't know everyone in the country and what they're, what they're up to, but they should be in the law for the good of hunting. I, I got a few terriers, but they're just pets running around. What is the scent that you like? It's, um, it's, it's actual, we buy it in bottles. It is fox pee. Oh, okay. But you buy it from America. Right. And it comes over, and then we, we buy the fox pee and we put it on a rag. But it's a strong potent smell, and the old hounds from the fall down are used to that smell. They'll follow that scent. So we're now following the master huntsman with his permission that we can come along and film what is going on today. I'm interested about how the band has changed the scene for obvious reasons it's changed a lot physically. Mm. How do you feel about how it's changed? Would you say it was the... bad legislation, wasn't it, really? I don't think an awful lot has changed, really. Um, I don't think an awful lot's changed. Um, we, we still... We set our trails. Um, and we hunt, and people enjoy themselves. It's a part of our way of life. So has it in any way sort of ruined the enjoyment that you get out of it? I don't think it's done a thing like that, no. I don't think it's ruined anything. Mm. How about the presence of saboteurs? Do you think, in a way, that has ruined the scene, or perhaps made it more well, we exciting had, for people? We haven't had much in the way of saboteurs this season. We have in the past. We're not aggressive with saboteurs at all. We don't confront them. We just let them get on with their own thing. Uh, regrettably, um, some of them are a little bit violent. Uh, it's a Saturday out for them and um, off they go to cause as much disruption as they can and for them to enjoy themselves really. If it was to do with hunting then I don't think they'd be quite so nasty to the animals. I mean they wouldn't be running in the back of my horse would they? If they really cared about animals. All these people here really care about animals. We've had a bit of a rough time with them. It isn't really all about the, the, the fox and, and the, the hound and everything, there is a bit of, and I still think there is, a bit of um, them and us, a bit of their bunch of snobs running around the countryside. As you can see, most of the people here are from the farming community and the rural community. Within the trade here, so if you're looking at the hunting world in here and, and the money that's here, is you've got the farrier. So you've got the farrier that earns the money doing the blacksmith. Then you've got the saddlers, the saddlers are mending the tack and repairing the tack. Then in amongst all of us lot, you've got people buying and selling horses. So you've got the people, you actually do have people called horse dealers. They will buy in horses, bring them on and move them on. You then have got the grooms, so the girls that go and help do the horses. And then from then you've got the knock-on effect with me and my business. I'm a fencing contractor and I do hedge laying, I, manage the, I help manage the countryside. So it's all interlocked and I don't think the, the animal rights group don't understand how interlocked to the community, the rural community, us as a community is. And the knock-on effect. Hello! <laughs> Whilst I was in Devon, I also had the opportunity to have a proper chat with a saboteur. I started stabbing because I didn't like fox hunting. I didn't like any hunting. Um, I feel every animal has a right to live and to kill it just for the sake of sport or entertainment is totally immoral and I wanted to do something about it. I've been doing it for 32 years now. The difference between before the ban and after the ban in the hunting field is much the same. Um, Hunts, when the ban came in, uh, made a pretense, at least those that we watched and followed, made a pretense of laying a trail. Um, but after they realised that the police were going to do nothing about it, they didn't even bother to pretend. Um, now they hunt just like they always did. How do people react when you tell them that you're a saboteur? Generally speaking, they're surprised. I suppose the image that the hunters portray of hunt saboteurs is of um, young tearaways, um, rural terrorists, and when they see somebody of my age and uh, not wearing a mask, then I guess they're surprised um, because that image has been portrayed by the pro-hunt lobby so skillfully and for so long that I'm afraid some of the mud sticks. Can you tell me about some of your worst experiences when you've been out in the field stabbing? My worst experience was when um, one of my colleagues had his skull fractured. He was uh, attacked by several people, one of whom was wearing a crash helmet, even though they were in a field, and uh, he had to go off in a, an ambulance to hospital. Um, 
that was serious. Sometimes the police have followed them up, but nothing's ever come of them because that those were in the days before we had camcorders. So do you feel more safe now going out when you have protection from yourself or someone with you is filming? Yes, we do. Most most of us carry camcorders or mobile phones and some of us wear body cams as well. And often it's, it's the case that the hunters are also filming the saboteurs. Why do you think that they're also taken to filming in defence of themselves as well? That baffles me. I've had my... I've been filmed and photographed hundreds, if not thousands of times. Just why, I don't know. They seem to think that by pointing a camera at us, we're, we're going to be zapped by some bionic ray. But um, Partly it's to intimidate us, because if we don't wear masks, they sometimes put our films or our faces on, on the internet and ask people to identify us. <laughs> Most wanted saboteur. <laughs> I've been doing this now for... 32 years and I don't wear a mask. Did you hear of people, once their identities have been found, that they receive threats to their family life? Um, I haven't had it at my own door. Um, somebody once put a, a shot, dead fox, in the lay-by outside my mother's bungalow, my elderly mother's bungalow, because I used to go there frequently. But that's, that's a typical cowardly thing. What do you think the future of fox hunting will be? Can you see there being a total ban or...? perhaps the opposite, to make less of a messy scene? I don't anticipate there'll be any change. I do not believe that uh, the hunting ban will ever be enforced. No way. When we have a prime minister who's pro-hunt and uh, a king-in-waiting who is pro-hunt and used to go hunting, there's no way that a government will enforce or expect the police to enforce the hunting act. I trust and hope that it will not be repealed because I believe there are majority of MPs who oppose hunting, but I don't believe that it will, the hunting ban will ever be properly enforced. What is your opinion of the current hunting act? Um, the hunting act is there, it could be enforced. It needs strengthening because it's too easy for hunters to um, make use of the loopholes. There's not often you get a law nowadays which can't be policed, so that on its own makes it seem obvious that there is a problem. There is a problem with the current law, but it's only a slight problem. The police make absolutely no effort to enforce it. We have called them out on many occasions. They will only come out if we are in a situation of public order, or should I say public disorder. If we're being threatened, intimidated or assaulted, the police will usually attend. When we then tell them that the hunt is hunting illegally, they say they're not interested in that, they are there simply to attend to the public order matter. Next, I travelled to Essex to speak to a conservationist about how many people see fox hunting as a necessary means of both pest control and protecting natural wildlife. In the UK, sadly, we've lost a lot of our predator species, and I mean top predators. So in recent centuries, we've lost lynx and wolf and bear and so on. And so the fox is actually one of the very, very few remaining predator species that we actually have. And we're now beginning to realise that the health of our ecosystems and the landscape generally actually depends uh, on having top predators available. So they help control other species. What you want is natural control, not man may control. If we look at uh, foxes, they all basically eat anything at all, anything they can get their hands on, so earthworms, fruit, young birds, and of course small mammals as well, including voles and also rabbits and hares. They're particularly keen on rabbits, obviously rabbits have a very, very high calorific value for them. And actual fact, we can link that also to how foxes can help us manage the countryside. Rabbits are in actual fact the number one issue in terms of non-native species and economic damage in the UK. The Centre for Agriculture and Bioscience International, or CABI as they're known, have actually estimated that the economic value of the damage caused by rabbits annually in this country is in excess of £200 million. So in that sense, foxes are actually providing us with a service. They're actually controlling a genuine pest species. So why not just allow the ecosystem to function naturally and not interfere with it? We also have to remember, of course, that foxes are native rabbits are definitely non-native, they're all Spanish, so they shouldn't be here. The fox is a native species and they're doing a job for the arable farmer.
when we actually look at what the Huns do and their effect on the countryside, I think we have to acknowledge that essentially they are neutral. There may be some damage or disturbance to the substrate that they're, they're riding over, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, you can encourage new plants to come in, you're, you're encouraging pioneer species um, and early successional species of plant. So the actual action of Hunts moving across the countryside is really neither here nor there. Towards the end of my investigation, Britain's current Prime Minister, Theresa May, publicly voiced that she was in favour of fox hunting and that she was open to abolishing the ban. Her actions sparked a public protest. Yeah, we're also here because the most powerful person in this country, Theresa May, has chosen yeah. on her own back to make fox hunting a political issue in this campaign. So suddenly, why is she in love with fox hunting? What brought about this massive change at such a critical time? She needs people to knock on doors. She needs people to campaign for conservative candidates in this election. And the hunting and shooting lobby have got her in an arm lock. They will say to her, Teresa, if you want campaigners to get on the streets, we will do it for you, but it will come at a cost. You have to offer us repeal of the Hunting Act. You have to offer us death boxes, dead hairs and dead stacks for votes. It's an absolute national disgrace. It's playing politics with wildlife and it should not happen in the modern civilised world. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. You know, it means a great deal to us because obviously the ban is, although it's not really put into place and a lot of the foxes still hunted, it's really important because it tells people that it is something that we should frown upon doing hunting foxes. And obviously like foxes are living beings, they do feel pain, and it's complete nonsense that we can kill them. And what, what I always worry about is if our government is willing to kill foxes for fun when foxes are so vulnerable, how can we trust them to look after the most vulnerable humans in society as well? Because obviously there's complete disregard for life in general, so it really is important to me. We feel that uh, like everything is connected together, so it's not about only foxes, it's about every kind of animal. So this is why we are here to support uh, like uh, one, one, one thing and then we can grow together like one. Uh, I can't think of many other things that appall me on so many levels as fox hunting. It does involve killing, it involves cr cruelty, there's all sorts of elements which the public don't even necessarily know about, but there's no doubt about that. But the fact that that's kind of ritualised, it's, it's, it's got that feeling of an organised Band of nasty people, frankly. Keep it up! When I set out to investigate what was already both a heated and complicated matter, I had no idea it was to get even more so. And now, the result of the upcoming general election could significantly change the lives of those for and against fox hunting. However, regardless of the law, whether it be prohibiting or allowing hunting, as long as there's still foxes in our countrysides, there will be hunters. And where there's hunters, there will be saboteurs.